uh, from Paul Wolfowitz. Go ahead. My name is Paul Wolfowitz. I'm a visiting scholar at the American <laughs> Enterprise Institute, and my question is about development assistance. Under George W. Bush, who was a conservative Republican, the United States spent billions of dollars to fight AIDS and malaria in Africa and elsewhere, and set up the Millennium Challenge Corporation to encourage governments of poor countries to pursue policies that promote economic growth and job creation. Do you believe those are still wise expenditures, or do you think that we can no longer afford them? Senator Santorum. Was the author of the Global Fund Bill and the Millennium Challenge in the United States Senate and someone who worked with the President on PEPFAR to deal with the issue of AIDS in Africa, I believe it's absolutely essential. Africa was a country on the brink, on the brink of, of complete meltdown and chaos, which would have been fertile ground for the radical Islamists to be able to, to, get, uh, to get a foothold. We're seeing it already, but the work that we've done in stabilizing, stabilizing that area, while humanitarian in nature, was absolutely essential for our national security. And I hear people up here talking about zeroing out foreign aid uh, and humanitarian aid in particular. Uh, I think that's absolutely the wrong course. You wanna, you wanna spend more money on the military? Zero out all the things we do to develop relationships around the world, and we will spend a lot more money on the military. It's important for us to use all the assets we have, promote our values. America is that shining city on the hill. It is the, it is the city that comes to the aid of those in trouble in, Ameri in, in the world. We have done more good for America in Africa right. and in the third world by the things that we've done, and we have saved money and saved military deployments by wisely spending that money, not on our enemies, but on folks who can and will be our friends. Her Herman Cain. Here again. And here's the question. Can the United States afford to continue that kind of foreign assistance to Africa for AIDS, malaria, could run into the billions of dollars? It depends upon priorities. Secondly, it depends upon looking at the program and asking the question, has that aid been successful? In other words, let's look at the whole problem. It may be worthwhile to continue, it may not. I would like to see the results. Just like every program we have here domestically, what have the results been? Then we make a decision about how we prioritize. Ron Paul. I, I think the uh, aid is all uh, worthless. It doesn't do any good uh, for most of the people. You take money from poor people in this country and you end up giving it to rich people in poor countries. And they're used as weapons of war, so you accomplish nothing. We should export some, maybe some principles about free markets and sound money, and maybe they could produce some of their, their own wealth. But this whole idea of, of talking about the endless wars and the endless foreign aid, it seems like nobody cares about the budget. I mean, we, we're in big trouble, and, and, and nobody wants to cut anything. So if you're going to keep sending foreign aid overseas and these endless wars that you don't have to declare and, and go into Libya without even consulting with the Congress, uh, the biggest threat, the biggest threat to our national cure, security is our financial condition. And this is just aggravating it. Governor, Governor Romney. Congress and Paul, what they're doing is cutting a trillion dollars out of the defense budget. They're cutting a trillion dollars out of the defense budget, which just happens to equal the trillion dollars they're putting into Obamacare. And so what you have is a president that has a priority of spending us into bankruptcy, but he's not just spending us into bankruptcy, he's spending the money foolishly. We need to protect America and protect our troops and our military and stop the idea of Obamacare. Right. That's the best way to save money, not the military. Right. But, but, Hold on one second, because Ron Paul wants to respond to that point. Well, they're not cutting anything out of anything. All this talk is just talk. <laughs> Believe me. They're cutting, they're nibbling, they're nibbling away at baseline budgeting, it's automatic increases, there's nothing cut against the military, and the people on the hill are near Italy hysterical because they're not going, the budget isn't going up as rapidly as they wanted to. It's a road to disaster, we better wake up. Oh, okay. Let's just, let's Quicker. just talk. Let's just talk about what they're cutting with the first $350 billion, not the next $600, which is coming down the road. The first $350 billion, what do they cut? They stopped the F-22. They delayed aircraft carriers. They stopped the Navy cruiser system. They said long-range Air Force bombers aren't going to be built. They're trying to cut our troops by 50,000. The list goes on. They're cutting programs, they're cutting the capacity of America to defend itself. Look, let's stand back All for right. a moment, because we've been talking about Israel and Iran. 
What, what, what we're talking about here is a failure on the part of the president to lead with strength. And that's why we have discussions about whether Israel should have to step in to stop the nuclear program, whether Iran is going to become nuclear. We have a president who pursued a, an agenda of saying we're going to be friendly to our foes and we're going to be disrespectful to our friends. The right course in America is to stand up to Iran with crippling sanctions, indict Ahmadinejad for uh, violating the, the, Geneva, or the uh, uh, Genocide Convention, uh, put in place the kind of crippling sanctions that stop their economy. I know it's going to make gasoline more expensive. There's no price which is worth a, 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 an Iranian nuclear weapon. And the right course for Israel is to show that we care about Israel, that they are our friend, we'll stick with them. If I'm president of the United States, my first trip, my first foreign trip, will be to Israel to show the world we care about that country and that region.